In this video, I'm going to talk about how to work with the lasso model in MATLAB. So, <clears throat> first, I'm going to simulate some data uh, from the lasso model. So, um, this data set, I'm going to have 200 observations and uh, 90 regressors, but we're actually going to split into a training and a validation data set. So, we're going to actively be using even fewer observations for estimation. Good. So, um, so firstly, the X matrix here is going to be very large. It's 200 by 90, so we have 90 regressor variables. So it's a huge matrix. Um, and Y, of course, is still our n by 1 vector. Then we have our beta variables. Uh, I've set these, um, let's do a histogram of what they look like. Um, Oh, and let's close all figures so that we can see what we're doing here. As you can see, uh, it's going to set a lot of them to, I've set a, forced it to set a lot of them to be equal to zero. So there's a huge mass point here. In fact, I've set, I've done it so that first, all of them are made to be random normals, but then 70% of them at random, what this does is it creates a, vic, a k by one vector of uniforms, so numbers between 0 and 1, and then I pick out the ones that are between that are smaller than 0.7, so that 70% of those uniforms are equal to 1, and whenever that occurs, I set the, the coefficient equal to 0. So in other words, um, the ones that are not 0, that's what we call the active set of parameter values, and these are the param those parameters. Okay, now we're ready to start estimating. When we estimate, I'm going to split into a training data set and a holdout data set. So again, I do this by using these uniforms, so numbers between random numbers between 0 and 1, and then I pick out the ones that are smaller than 0.5. So I pick out 50% of my sample here as my uh, training data set. So if I uh, run just this part here by pressing F7, sum of i training 102 so there are 102 observations in my training data set and then the not training data set that's the holdout and then we can start by estimating OLS um, by our usual OLS formula where we take out the part of the X matrix uh, that's in the training data set so this is 102 by 90 so it's X prime X inverse uh, X prime Y then we have the rich where I just picked lambda to be equal to something. So uh, rich can be estimated by x prime x plus lambda times an uh, I, uh, I matrix. D. So that's I is a diagonal matrix of ones. Inverse x prime y, that's a clever way of estimating the rich coefficients. And then for lasso, we're going to use the built-in lasso command. And I'm going to try ask it to do a tenfold cross-validation. And then it will automatically pick a sequence, a number of different lambdas that it will estimate for. So this is going to take a while. We can have MATLAB say hi to us when it's done estimating. So you can see that it's busy now. Okay, so lasso returns two things. B lasso, beta lasso. All, and this is going to be uh, there. There's our uh, 90 variables, and then um, it estimates it a number of different times for different lambdas. And then what I'm doing down here is I'm using this lasso plot facility here. I give it the coefficients and the stats, and I tell it I want to see a CV, a cross validation plot. Let's see what it's showing us. It's showing us the cross validation value for different values of lambda. And of course, 10 to the minus 3, we're moving in towards a lambda of 0 up here. And in this end, lambda gets bigger and bigger. So this is moving towards OLS, and this is increasing. So the cross-validation is minimized here. And then the typical standard is to pick the first value of lambda that's within one standard deviation of the lowest value of the cross-validation. Because sometimes the cross-validation criterion doesn't bend back up. But it, this is nicely behaved because I've chosen the true data generating process to be uh, the lasso data generating process. 
So we're going to pick out the blue one here. That's the uh, and the index for that is saved here. Stats index one i uh, se. And in this stats, it's a structure that has a lot of different members. For example, you can you look at so the the b lasso all is this large thing here. It's 89, so that's our k minus 1 by 100, so there are 100 values of lambda. So this lambda thing here shows you which lambdas estimated it for, and that's what's on the x-axis here. And then uh, number 59 is this guy here, the first one to be within one standard deviation of the minimum. Oops. What's going on here? Something's wrong with my scrolling, it seems. It's a little bit strange. I'll try and reopen this guy. There we go. Alright, so now we can evaluate the predictions on the holdout sample. So in each of these cases we take the rows in the X matrix that we kept in the holdout sample. So these are not the ones that we used for estimation, uh, but the other ones. So we have our training data set and our holdout data set. And then we evaluate x times beta for each of these. So for each of these models, even though we have this penalization criterion, our prediction of y is still just x beta. And then we evaluate them there, and we calculate the average squared residual between y in the holdout and this predicted y for OLS, rich, and lasso. And as you can see, Lasso did really well on this sample. So that's telling us that maybe we need to, we could improve the ridge perhaps by setting a harsher or, or a, a larger value of lambda. Let's actually try and just do that. Yeah, see that helped a lot actually in the holdout sample. Of course you need to do this ridge with cross validation as well to do it up, up uh, in the best way. We can look at a histogram of the estimated uh, coefficients. Here you can see that the lasso is uh, in close to zero. And actually, let's uh, let's show ridge as well here. I don't know why I forgot to do that. Um, put it in the legend as well. Here we go. You can see that ridge, the yellow histogram is narrower. The red histogram has all of these zeros but the yellow histogram is shrunk in towards zero, and the blue is OLS, which is um, it's capturing some of the spurious correlations because there are so many uh, regressors. So it's incorrectly assigning some of them to be too big. And in fact, we can plot, we can do a plot here where we have on the x-axis the true values, and on the y-axis we have uh, the, the um, estimates. What you can see is that there are a lot of red dots here. They're right on zero because Lasso sets a lot of them to be equal to zero. Whereas OLS, here it's setting one of the coefficients which should be two, it's uh, zero, it's giving it an estimate of two. So here you can see that a lot of the zeros get uh, much larger estimates for OLS. And that's how we work with um, Rich and Lasso and OLS.